so today we're going to start with uh, uh, last topic uh, this topic is uh, generally it's not covered but i think it's important because when you're going to be uh, if you decide to go in this space then you would not be designing chips which are you know stand alone chips you will be part of a digital you know some big soc system on a chip your analog stuff or rf stuff or mix signal ic design it's going to be all part of a big system chip so then uh, in that case uh, you know uh, today's topic becomes extremely relevant and important okay so uh, pay attention so our standard uh, we're going to talk about uh, the fully differential amplifiers and i'll motivate i'll spend a lot of time motivating why we do this and why is it important so um, that way you will you will understand why this kind of so these circuits are important uh, when we get to our so system on a chip mm -hmm. where the analog uh, circuits sensitive analog circuits have to co coexist with a uh, extremely noisy digital circuits on the same chip okay so if we look at a standard um, differential amplifier that we learned so far mm -hmm. so we had plus minus V input plus V input minus, and then we had a one V out. Okay, and in this case, what happens is uh, our um, you know input common mode is rejected. Huh? Rejected by what? If there is any input common mode variation, what rejects it? I mean, the very foundation differential pair. Right? We have a differential pair which will reject it, and we have a single-ended output. Uh, which we like to use and all that stuff works out fine with all the circuits that we have done okay now if we want to do a differential fully differential amplifier fully differential means inputs are differential and outputs are differential also okay so then uh, you draw them in this way so if this is plus minus then you would do you know minus plus and this is vi plus vi minus and this is V output minus V output plus, okay? And we kind of did this, um, you know, a while ago, um, and we talked about some of the circuits, but uh, today we are gonna get into the really nitty gritty details, okay? So why are we doing this? I talked, already tell you, told you about this um, SOC business, right? Why we are doing this? So uh, let's say this output of our op-amp, huh, this particular output is, um, so this is like, uh, and you are all exposed to layout now. So we are routing this in a piece of metal. Let's say metal 2 or metal 3, something like that. And it's going from point A to point B, somewhere on the chip. And now on top of that, there is some digital line, let's say, uh, that's going. So this green line is, uh, let's say, metal 3. Uh, this is metal 3 and let's say this is um, metal 2 and this is your V out. It's going from one point in the chip to the next point and there is some digital clock line, let's say, okay, is, is running like this and there's something you couldn't avoid for some reason or the other, okay. Now what will happen in this case? What will happen is if you, if you look at this piece which is right here, huh, what do you have? Two layers one on top of another one, and you will have a parasitic capacitance out there. Is that clear? And that parasitic capacitance, so anytime this digital signal is going from zero to VDD, and let's say if this was my analog signal, which is supposed to go, it's a small signal, I'm just magnifying it, and this uh, digital clock, which is going from zero to VDD, it's going to, uh, through that capacitance, parasitic capacitance is going to jerk the, the analog output voltage, okay? So, and what we will find is um, every so often you will see these things, okay? These are kinks at the output. Is that part clear? Okay, so this is the problem. Because we are coexisting on a digital chip, I'm kind of exaggerating the problem so that you understand and then we will, we will, I'll kind of lead you to how do I solve this? So to solve this, what I need, I can do is, I can make another signal, which is, which needs to go fully symmetrical. Hmm? And this is again made to M2. And this is, let's say, V out P, then I can say this is my V out N. Okay. Of course, the V out N will also get disturbed. So you remember the basic concept we do in analog, right? If you can do, 
you know better then you mess with everything equally so that their net effect is cancelled okay so now here i'm intentionally putting the v out n also in the exact same way okay so that the coupling to both v out p and v out n is all together okay and then what will happen is let's say the the v out n was uh, it was like this something like i'm just uh, over drawing on top of it, but you you get the point right then what will happen is the differentially if i look at the signal uh, then these uh, these noise spikes will get cancelled out okay i'm kind of showing them separately i could have uh, may i could just do let's see you know instead of doing it this way what i could do is i could signal i could do this okay and now you get the point okay so this is the power of having differential outputs or differential circuits okay so any kind of noise which is on the chip uh, which it if it couples to a single output then we are in trouble but if it couples to both the outputs and we make sure that it symmetrically couples to both the outputs we are okay okay because uh, once you have one differential amplifier fully differential amplifier you'll have probably the next gain stage will also be fully differential so typically what we try to do is as soon as you come inside the chip we become differential okay because when the interface to the outside world is always single ended okay so you you convert to fully differential and then we kind of maintain everything fully differential okay all the way to the a to d converter and once you come out with bits the bits don't have to be differential although there are places where i have done differential digital circuits so that um, see there are two things on a chip in an soc one is a victim and the other one is a uh, it's a source which is uh, uh, which is the painful you know part of our you know digital output right so then you can you can either make the source differential or uh, your uh, so that uh, you know the the noise which is coupling is also differential okay so that uh, so you can do all sorts of tricks and it just depends on how important it is for you okay so for example when you have a inverter running hmm, where we have uh, input going on then you typically balance it out with yet another pseudo inverter which may not be necessary but then what will happen is it's going back and forth on digital also same way so that uh, the supply current always stays constant so those kind of tricks you play hmm? so i think the motivation for differential circuit is clear right okay the other advantage of having a differential circuit is you have differential input and differential output originally let's say you have a supply voltage let's say this is zero and this is vdd hmm? so where would you like your output common mode to be typically in such a situation if it's zero and vdd hmm vdd by 2 right why because i want to have a swing on both sides so we would typically do this is vdd by 2 and then so that the reason we do that that is because i can have a you know signal that looks like this a single ended signal that looks like this now if i do differential circuit then i have yet another output which is something like this okay and now since i have differential output what do you think will happen what ha what happened to our swing now the swing has doubled because when you look at the differential signal swing you do vop plus minus vop minus you look at the differential signal so now the i have bumped up my signal by uh, 6 db factor of 6 okay uh, of course there is a power dissipation and all those things but typically in analog we push for performance always okay you want to get the best performance because performance is something that you cannot get back once the chip is taped out you can always turn things off and make things worse but to begin with uh, we like to kind of be extremely uh, paranoid and pessimistic uh, about what goes on on the chip so that we can cover uh, for all sorts of uncertainties and the reason i tell that is that if you have some performance issues then to debug them and to solve them it can take 6 to 6 months to you know 8 months easily just to figure it out uh, and uh, and that's a very painful you know in it can leave a big impact on your uh, psychology you know is, is that bad so you have to do all sorts of things to figure out uh, why this is happening so it's better to be safe um, and you know do all sorts of things to to make sure that by design you're good uh, so uh, how do we do these differential amplifiers okay let's draw a picture please draw a single ended amplifier picture and i'm going to teach you quick tricks 
uh, so that you you can convert any circuit to differential. Hmm? Okay, all right. So this is our single-ended output, V output. Can you tell me which one, which is the positive sign and which is the negative sign? The right one is uh, negative and the this is positive. Does everybody agree? Huh? There is an inversion on the right side. Okay, so that should be fairly straightforward. Now, um, this is the standard five, five transistor OTA that we have used, we have used, right? So how do I convert this to um, fully differential circuit? Okay, so the best way, I mean the simplest way I can teach you is, let's copy this one more time over here. And what you do is you look at wherever there is a current mirror. So let's see, uh, let's see this particular current mirror right here. I'll remove this and um, as soon as you do that, will this work? It will not because there is no gate bias. So typically you have to have some kind of bias which is coming from somewhere else for now. And as soon as I do the bias, then what I will have is I will, I will have two outputs. Okay. So this is going to be my VOP and this is going to be VOM. Okay. So just by disconnecting this uh, current mirror, uh, connection, we have made a fully differential amplifier. So what was the functionality of this piece, if you remember, originally we called it differential to single ended converter. When I was teaching you in the beginning, right, you get this, uh, because of the current mirror we get differential to single ended operation for free, which was okay you know, a long time ago, but now we are kind of getting into advanced circuits where I want differential outputs. Yeah. So, uh, so this is uh, one thing. Another advantage that you get with fully differential circuits is, um, you know, noise is coming from everywhere on the chip, okay, when you design a circuit. Uh, it can come through substrate, it can come through supply, it can come through ground. And if you have fully differential circuit, then the coupling to every output is symmetrical. Okay, as long as you have made sure that circuits are laid out uh, very symmetrically. Also fully differential circuits give you an advantage that you don't have to lay out everything. You can just lay out half circuit and then you just use your, you know, on your phone you do mirror operation, right? Uh, so similarly you can do that in your layout and it, it just works. So you kind of reduce your layout work by 6 dB as I like to say, right? Uh, but, but that's something, that's a trick that you have to use all the time. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, we did this before, right? Any transistor, hmm? if you provide a bias voltage, what do we do generally? Remember that. I mean, this also has a transistor, right? So, if I if I draw this, sorry, huh, then it will be clear to you. I, I showed it as a current source, but if I have to draw it as a circuit, it will look like this. And what do we say then? We say, oh, this is my VBN. So, what do I do there? How do I provide VBN? You missed some of the lectures where I was teaching bias currents, okay? You remember that? We, we, we transport currents inside our chip, you know, from every place. So there will be some current which will be coming into uh, your block, right, IB. And that will generally flow through a, some kind of current mirror you know, and that will be connected to this, okay? Similarly, on the top, I could, uh, I mean, let's say I could do this. current mirror, okay, connected to this. And then there will be some current which we can make it like IB, some other IB current. These IBs are something we always, we always get one current to your circuit and then you use mirrors to reflect it all over the place. But right now I'm brute force showing you separate, separate sources for sake of understanding. Is that part clear? So Munal, that was a good question, okay. Okay, so now, um, so now that I have taught you the trick, about how to go from single-ended amplifier to differential amplifier. We'll play that, play with that idea in multiple cases because I don't want you to just give a circuit and understand. I want you to understand how we are going from point A to point B, okay? Because somebody may throw a circuit at you and say that, hey, convert this to differential, okay? And they would expect you to understand what it means. And here um, is, a, is a trick I would like you to remember, okay? So let's say um, our simple, um, if you remember, Please draw these schematics because I expect you to draw these schematics in your exams.
Okay. So this was one of the amplifiers we had done and it's a single stage um, amplifier. If you remember, uh, we were doing slew rate business. Um, okay. Okay, can somebody help me with the signs? This is, um, yeah, let's say this is my VO, VD and ground. Is left positive or which is positive? Right is positive. Everybody gets that? Huh? Because there is an inversion and there is another inversion. Two inversions, okay? Okay, so right is positive and this is negative. So how do we convert this into fully differential circuit now? What's the trick? What do you identify first? Where we go from differential to single-ended? And in this case, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to do this one. Okay. So um, you can kind of see that, hey, you know, this is where the action is going on at the output, this current mirror. So if I can work on this current mirror, then I can possibly get a, uh, you know, a differential output, right? So then what you could do is, uh, you could say that, okay, I'll take care of this, I'll remove this. All you have to do is you have to put a bias, okay? Now, where is the output? The second output is going to be here. So that's one way to do it. And there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, and each will have some positive, negative uh, associated. So this is one way to get a VO. Uh, this will be VOP and this is VON. Agree? Yeah? The other way to do it is, um, you know, sometimes we use this circuit to get a lot of slew rate and we want some kind of scaling which happens at the output branch. Then what you could do is this. So this was our original circuit. Then what you can do is you can replicate the out, output branch. Hmm? So we can do this. And uh, specifically, once you have a current mirror, it's very easy to get extra, uh, extra currents, okay, by just adding one more transistor with the common gate. So, for example, what I would do then is, uh, I would bring another transistor here. Hmm? And similarly, I would bring another one here. Okay, so, and then I could... Okay, so then I have another output here. If that is VOP, then this would be VON. Is that clear? So I replicated uh, this piece right here. Okay, this piece. So the outer branch I replicated. And generally you do that because many times what you do is you have 1 is to K or 1 is to k type of ratio to scale the output branch current, okay? And here also you could do the same thing. You could do, um, you know, 1 is to k and, you know, 1 is to k branch at the output. So only the output branches have large current when you need to have a really, very high slew rate. Is this part clear, what I, how I convert it? Uh, so there are two ways you can convert it. One is you can just take the diode out and put a bias voltage and then you get differential output. Other, output, other way to do is, is replicate the output branch completely and then uh, uh, then you will get uh, and you change the position of your diode, okay, so that you get plus output and minus output. Hmm? Let's move on to uh, our favorite um, topology, the folded cascode. Please draw the folded cascode um, uh, schematic and then I will show you how to make it fully differential. So when you want to draw folded cascode, we first draw our output branch and it looks like this. These are all top PMOSes and the bottoms are all NMOSes. Okay. 
and then um, if I'm doing the PMOS version, then typically you have a current source. And one of them will go to this side and the other one will go to this side. Hmm? And um, if you do a single ended folded cascode, then what we typically do is this. This becomes a current mirror on the bottom, if you remember. And then we connect this part over here. Okay, so on the bottom you have a current mirror. If you have trouble uh, understanding what I just did, then I think you need to review your basics uh, again about folded cascode amplifier and this is my V output, positive let's say. Okay, can somebody help me with the signs? So this is my IS, is left positive or, or, or right positive? Chanchal, can you help? Which side is positive, which side is negative? Left side is positive or right side is positive? I mean, I'll just go over this again. This is my output. So we need to go from here to the nearest input. Okay, this path. What do you see in that path? So you can start from the input. Okay, so let me help you here. A different color. Let's say I start from positive here. What will you get at the output, uh, at the drain? Negative, correct? And that's negative, and that negative from source to drain, it stays negative. Okay, so there is no inversion here. So then um, my sign is incorrect. Is that clear? So then this should be, this should be a negative input, and this should be my positive input. Are you clear with what I just did? Okay, all right. So if I want to convert this into fully differential circuit, Aparth, you want to help? Yeah. How would we convert this to fully differential? What's the simplest way you identify? Diode. Huh. Okay, excellent. So tell me, what do you do? No, you're, you're on, the, on the right track. So you, we, yeah, what do you want to do on that diode? You can remove this diode connection. Does everybody agree? You just remove the diode connection and as soon as you do that, what do you have to do? You have to provide you have to pro provide a bias voltage here. So let's say, um, let's write all the bias voltages so that it's clear. Let's say this is VB4, VB4, VB3, VB3, VB2, VB2, and now we have VB1. You know, we know how to do that. I mean, I have taught you how to do bias current mirrors. If you remember like fifth lecture or something like that, right? So this we can take care of it hmm? using resistors or whatever. Uh, you know, that VD sad business, all that stuff we have learned. Hmm? And now, this becomes my additional output. Do you see that? So, this will be my VON. Agreed? So, this is a very quick way to create a uh, fo fully differential folded cascode amplifier. Okay? Now, let's do uh, our yet another favorite topology, which we have kind of studied in excruciating detail, which is a fully differential two-stage OTA. Right now, I'm just teaching you mechanics. You know, how do you draw these schematics um, just by observing? And once you, once that becomes a second nature, then uh, then you can easily, uh, you know, uh, get deeper into it. So all the design nuances. So first, let's draw just a standard two-stage OTA. All of you know. So please draw, uh, and then you know, in your book, all of you please draw. Uh, so we have our diff pair. Current, and then typically we have a current mirror on the top, correct? And then what we have is a, let's say this is my PMOS, VDD. What kind of device do we have here? PMOS or NMOS? Huh? This is PMOS, thank you. And then uh, let's say this is VB for the current mirror. Runal, is that clear? On the bottom device. This is my current source also at the output branch. Okay. All right. 
And then um, what do we have for compensation? Huh? We have RC or C whatever. So right now we are not latching on to that. Let's say for now we just have a compensation cap CC. And then this is my output. Can uh, Who else can help me? Uh, somebody on that side? Um, Hanumanji, yeah, boli. Uh, right side mein, um, so let's say this is my positive. V output positive. Is the left side positive input or right side positive input? Can you tell? Right side is positive. Everybody agrees? Hmm, he's absolutely right. Huh? Okay. So this positive becomes this negative and that negative will bring this to positive. Okay, when you go from gate to uh, gate to drain, we keep doing that. Now, how do we make this? Okay, Ruthu, tell me. Yeah, how would you make it fully differential? What do we identify? The trick? Current mirror, yeah. Huh? Ruthu is absolutely right. So, what then you do is, as soon as she, she said, I identify current mirror, then this will become, Brunal, you will never forget now. What do you do when you remove the current mirror connection? Put a bias voltage there. So this will be another bias voltage, some VB2, something like that. Okay. So that will come from some outside the circuit. Now what do we do, Ruthu? Do we still have the fully differential outputs? No. Then what do you have to do? To make it fully differential? I have to make a replica of it on the left side. Okay. Because remember, fully differential circuits are, you can just chop it off in the middle and they are perfect symmetry. Okay, so in this case, there is no perfect symmetry. So what you can do is you can now draw the rest, which is right here. And this is also VB. This connected here. And then this becomes my, this is negative. So this will become my VO. And then I will have a compensation cap, which will go over here, CC. Okay. So if you do layout, right, you know how painful it is to even lay out one inverter, how long it takes. So here in this case, we have so many, uh, so many uh, nodes and so many devices, right. So when you want to lay this out, the trick you use is you take this current, uh, this, okay, and you make it like this. You split it in two. Are you following me? So that current mirror um, device, I split it in two pieces, okay, one to the right side, one to the left side. It's the same current, uh, current source. And then I can split this circuit right in the middle. Do you see that? It's perfect symmetry, okay. That's what is uh, beautiful about fully differential circuits. They're perfect symmetry, okay. So then I can just lift, uh, do the left half and right half and then, uh, then you can get away with it. But, you know, if this is okay for your layout uh, for your first ship, okay. Um, as you go forward, uh, we, we get into more nitty gritty details because we want to make sure that uh, this piece is common centroid and things like that, okay. Do you remember we talked about, I don't think you have seen the layout lecture, but uh, to, for, to get good offset performance, we have to have common centroid layout. So in that case, there is some difference. Uh, that you have to uh, you have to worry about when you do the layout. But to a first order, you can do half circuit and you can replicate it. Okay, so this is the way you would do uh, fully differential two stage OT. Uh, are you with me in terms of uh, what we have done so far? Would I would you like me to go over anything again? Because I'm going to shake you up a little bit because this doesn't work. Whatever I've shown so far. Okay, do you? So far you are okay with me, right? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Now go back to our uh, circuits 101. If you do a simplest fully differential circuit, huh, it looks like this. We ready? And this would be the resistor based. And this is M1, M2. This is my diff pair. And this is IS. So this is VI plus VI minus and then you'll have VO plus and VO minus. This is like the simplest possible uh, fully differential circuit, agree? Okay. So um, and then you can make a symbol out of it that looks like this, 
plus minus minus plus etc etc let's assume the vi plus and vi minus are equal which means i am applying a common mode voltage hmm? okay so vi plus equal to vi minus is equal to some v input common mode okay and you can assume that okay m1 and m2 are in saturation now in this case what would be my output common mode voltage can you tell me what is vocm is equal to vo minus equal to vo plus can somebody tell me based on whatever we have learned so far pratyush ha ah, correct so he is absolutely right so if everything is equal okay then there will be is divided by 2 and there will be is divided by 2 everybody agrees it will split equally and the same current has to flow through these two resistors so the output voltage will be equal to vdd minus ir drop which is is not iss is divided by 2 times r everybody gets that so output common mode is defined very well defined hmm? uh, this one works very well hmm? so then you would say oh so what's wrong with whatever we did so far uh, so now the uh, we are peeling the onion here right uh, what is the limitation of this circuit what is the gain of this circuit is decided by shivaji gm times r the gain is decided by gm times r everybody agrees because r will be some value which is Uh, less than the r out of the transistor typically mm -hmm. and if i want to increase the gain gmr what happens what happens to the resistor it should grow and if the resistor grows then what will happen here the drop will start increasing mm -hmm. and we are operating from 0 to uh, vdd okay and then suddenly we are stuck because we want to be in the middle right biasing and as you start increasing the resistance it will start going down do you see that the ir drop the output voltage and then we are in trouble because then i cannot have a symmetrical swing and the circuit is useless okay so you understand the limitation of this circuit right because from that we will start the next circuit so the next circuit we did was uh, we can do this we don't use resistive load but we use active load something like this i s and this is my v i plus and this is v i minus okay um so here in this case um i really want you to pay attention because people spend a lot of time chasing their tail you know what chasing a tail is have you ever seen a dog chasing its own tail the dog doesn't go anywhere or even a cat can chase you know you're just chasing it so this this circuit is some a classic example if you try, start simulating you will be chasing your tail huh? so um what happens here is you may simulate this circuit and you would say that vo plus vo minus okay these are my outputs all right and then you would say that hey if i start simulating this circuit right my outputs are either vdd or ground that's what you'll observe okay then you'll say okay let me start i will not use the word because for us it's like analog designers it's a four letter word okay even though the letters are five uh, you start doing this business huh? and then what happens is eventually you get the right answer you will see that oh this is equal to vdd by 2 and this is equal to vdd by 2 and what you did is you kind of played around with the device sizes okay and the, then you get vdd by 2 you send chip like this out it doesn't work so let me explain what happens okay so if you if you look at this circuit in the simplest form there is a current source on the top let's call it it and then the current source on the bottom let's call it id i top and i down do you see that when i'm applying input common mode then the current is split equally the bottom current source is split equally and it will be the bottom current source will be some value is divided by 2 agree okay and then the top is also biased by some uh, bias voltage correct the top part is also biased by some bias voltage and it will have some uh, some top current i top okay and the difference between these two is finally going to flow through 
the impedance at that point. And what's the impedance at this point? R out up and R out down. Okay, so it will be your um, R O P parallel with R O N. And this can be large. And any difference current can flow through the resistor and it can either take it up or down because that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to get a large gain. We really want this gain to be as high as possible. Okay, so smallest difference between top current and bottom current. Okay, you will, you will see the output voltage go up and down. Is that clear? So uh, this is a problem. This is the problem that, you know, I didn't explain to you so far. Okay, and now I'm uh, kind of showing you what happens, right? So um, what happens is, uh, you know, these two currents in, in simulation land, when you're doing circuit simulations, you could change the size of M3 and M4, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and eventually you will get it exactly right. Huh? And then you will match the two top and bottom current and you will find that, oh, my circuit, finally I have VDD by 2 at the output. You change the temperature of your circuit, it will crap out. Huh? You change the process, it will crap out. Okay, so it doesn't work is what I'm trying to say. And uh, many times, I mean, even the uh, experienced designers can make this mistake, okay, of using this four letter word, right? So don't, don't do that. Just you have to understand that whenever there is a high impedance point in your circuit, you have to be extra careful hmm? because the simulator can fool you if you don't take proper precaution. Hmm? So what we need to do is we need to somehow sense what's going on at the output, okay, and then fix the situation. So for example, I need to sense my output voltage and I need to fix this top current, okay, so that my output common mode is very well defined. Why do we worry about output common mode? Because we want that swing to be symmetrical. The input common mode is taken care by diff pair, okay, so the output is kind of independent of input common mode. The diff pair will, you know, if the input common mode changes, it doesn't have any bearing on the output, okay? But the output common mode we have to worry about. So this is kind of the new thing I'm introducing you to is output common mode voltage. And it comes because of fully differential circuits, okay? So let's go back to, um, you know, really simple circuits, right? Now you, we're kind of going backward um, because we start the class with simple op-amp type of circuits and here is a simplest op-amp circuit huh? you can think of. Let's say this is my, and this is my VCM, okay? So I apply VI and VO. And let's say the resistor values are equal. What will be my output voltage? Interview question. Yeah, can you tell me what the output voltage will be? Mm -hmm. ah, what is your name? Vidhi. Thank you. She caught me. Did, did you hear what she said? The output will be saturated to one side or the other. Why is that? Positive feedback. Okay, so this is the, I mean, everybody is throwing you, in baseball they say throw a curve ball or we say Ashwin's carom ball, right? He's trying to trick you. So this is a carom ball for you. Huh? So you should, first thing you have to make sure the negative feedback is there. Huh? Excellent answer. So what we need to do is this is minus and this is plus. Everybody gets it? So this was the, um, the carom ball for you. Now what do we do? What do we get at the output? If this is a VCM, then what we say in analysis is this is also VCM because it's a negative feedback. And then what is the, uh, the equations we use is VO minus VCM divided by R is equal to, um, uh, let's keep it uh, R2 and R1 so that and at the end we will do. And then what happens? VCM minus... Um, Vi divided by R1 and then your output voltage will be minus R2 by R1 times V input, okay. That's our standard differential output uh, or uh, the signal path and the common mode will be plus 1 plus R2 over R1 hmm, Vcm, agree? So in this case, my signal path has the gain that we desire. And then the common mode path is also very well defined with certain gain because you can kind of look at it like a superposition, okay. The circuit can be looked at as superposition. So uh, very well defined. Now let's do the same analysis with a differential circuit that we have learned so far. And um, slowly you'll realize uh, the issue that we are having, okay. So if I had to do this fully differentially, hmm, then what I would do is this. 
So this is my negative, positive, positive, negative, and agree. So let's call this vi plus vi minus, and this would be vo minus, and this would be vo plus. Everybody understands what's going on here. I've just made the circuit fully differential. I had a, you know, one output, now I have second output, which is exactly opposite. Hmm? And let's say this was, uh, let's make this equal to R, everything is R. Okay. Now in this circuit, my input common mode, to begin with, let's say this is a 3 volt circuit, hmm? just to make it easy, 3 volt supply. Hmm? And let's say that um, to make a point, um, my this voltage is 1.5 and this voltage is 1.5 volts, right in the middle, common mode. Then what would be the voltage at this point? Let's say it's 1.5 to begin with because it's a common mode, right, half. Um, so, so this would be, uh, let's say, 1.5 volts. We are not applying any signal yet, okay, just a DC point. What would be the output voltage now? 1.5, 1.5. You just have to go in here and substitute. Okay, because differential, um, well, let's not even do that. I mean, you can just do Kirchhoff's current law, right? There is current flowing here, current flowing here, the same current has to flow here. Agreed? So if I put 1.5, 1.5, there is zero current, which means in the output branch also zero current. Okay. Uh, are you with me so far? Because I'm kind of making you walk through the trap right now. So I want you to fall in the trap and you discover and then you we come out of it, okay? The next trap is, uh, what if this voltage is, I'm going to change this voltage to 1.6. What will be the output voltage? 1.7. So this will look like 1.7 volts and this would be 1.7 volts. How about if it was 1.4 volts? Hmm? And then this will become, what was this volt value? 1.3. Everybody agrees, right? Because it will, the current will kind of drive it on one way or the other. So, um, are you puzzled by this? What's going on? So, what's happening here is uh, output common mode is not defined at all. It can take any value. Okay, so if you take this circuit, and let's say you, you took one of the op amps that we just developed, OTAs, one we developed, and then you build this circuit in simulator line, okay? And you simulate it, okay? And then you simulate it over process, temperature, everything, right? You will see the output voltage will go all over the place. It will be fixed because uh, everything is matched, but it will not be very well defined. The output common mode is not defined very well. The input common mode, which is uh, coming from somewhere else, we are assuming that it's very well defined because it's VICM plus, uh, plus VI and minus VI, okay? That's what we are saying. Uh, is this part clear, this trouble that we have with this circuit? Huh? Huh. So we are not talking about differential right now. We are only talking about common mode, okay? Differential stuff will work just fine. We are only talking about common mode def definition. Okay. In the previous circuit, the common mode was very well defined by IR drop, correct? Because I had this physical IR drop there. In this circuit, because I have such a large gain in this op amp, the common mode is not very well defined. And it can take any value and it will take, it will change depending upon, uh, you know, what condition you are in. That's all I'm trying to say. So, um, what we need is something called common mode feedback circuit. Everybody understands the problem, right? Because it's such a simple circuit. As soon as I make it fully differential, I'm not able to uh, tell what is the output common mode. In the previous circuit, how did I get the output common mode? What defines the output common mode? Because I'm defining this VCM voltage here. Do you see that? Okay, I'm applying a VCM, common mode voltage. And that will control what my output voltage is, okay, as a result. In this case, I don't have such a norm. 
to control the uh, the common mode voltage. Every differentially, everything looks good. Okay. So what we need to do then we need to do something. So what we need to do is um, let's say this is my circuit, and typically uh, we have. I'm drawing the simplest rendition of our differential amplifier. So um, this will have some kind of bias voltage, right? On the top, the current uh, current source, and here also you have some kind of bias voltage. So this would be VBP, VBP, or this is VBN. Okay, if you know what I mean. There is some DC bias we are applying uh, to get the current, and this is my um, you know diff pair somewhere. So this is M1, M2, and I say this is my V VIP and VIN. And then I have these two outputs, okay. And the problem is the top current and bottom current, they don't match exactly, okay. And whatever the error current is there, that will flow through my very high output resistance and it will rail out one way or the other, okay, because it's a very high gain circuit. Huh? So then what we need to do is we need to sense that condition and we need to correct it. And that's what is called common mode feedback. So what's the input? Input is common mode and output is control of the common mode. Remember that, okay. So what we need to do then is we need to have a circuit, very simple circuit, which will go into our CM sense and then I need to control either this or I can control this piece, whichever one. I'm just showing you both because all we have to do is make sure that the top and bottom currents are exactly matched. Okay? That's all we are trying to do. So we are sensing the output common mode and we are saying, is it going all the way to zero or is it going all the way to uh, VDD, right? Where is it going? And then sensing that I can compare it to something. So for example, I could have a reference this reference could be equal to VDD by 2. So I would say that compare it to reference and if it's if it's not close to VDD by 2, then I need to do something. And I need to control either the top current or bottom current so that they line up exactly like that. And then it will work over process, temperature, voltage, whatever is going on. Because it always, the feedback will be always active. And this part is called common mode feedback, okay. All right. So the simplest way to sense uh, common mode is you know, I can just take two resistors, okay, and let's say this is my VOP, this is my VON, then what's at the center? If I have two resistors, what will be the center point? Average of the two, okay, so this will be VOP plus VON divided by two. You get it? Agree? And then I can take this voltage and then I can process it. I can compare it. So I can say that, oh, let me sense this and compare it to uh, VREF, which is my desired common mode, which could be VDD by 2. And if it's up or down, then I will control one of these current sources on the top and bottom. Is that clear? So that's the way you do your common mode feedback. Now, uh, uh, the last thing I wanted to show you. So this is a one simple way to detect common mode. The second um, uh, and and the implementation could be as simple as uh, controlling the uh, controlling the current uh, on the top or bottom. Uh, so uh, the second part is going to be um, you know so one way I said is uh, I can control the control the current source um, and you know I can make it up and down. So uh, so we can we can take care of this this particular phenomenon the top or bottom control. The second one is. Um, is also a very interesting uh, circuit um, and I have used it many, many circuits and I just want to give you the insights and we'll stop right there. Hmm? And the, the circuits which uh, I'm going to provide you in your notes, uh, please review them uh, because looking at those circuits, you will understand how the basic concept is uh, used to implement. Okay, The circuits will look complicated, but I want you to get over that hurdle of looking at huge circuits synthesize it and you know break it down and look at the simplest piece. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Uh, so the second way to do uh, common mode feedback is I use 
property of the MOSFET, okay, which is uh, when it's a non-saturation region, okay, because that's, I like to exploit that property everywhere I can, huh? because uh, we use the saturation everywhere and the poor non-saturation region becomes unhappy. So we have to exploit it in many places, okay. So uh, let's say the transistor is in non-saturation region, right, and then I apply VOP, okay, over here. What is the resistance of this? Do you remember we went through that uh, figuring out uh, uh, triode region resistance? Anybody remember? You want to look back in your notes? The resistance this R in is given by 1 divided by mu n C ox W by L and then the VGS minus VT. Correct? And it kind of looks like the GM of the transistor, if you will, right? The transistor is in non-saturation, but the resistance equation looks like a GM. The expression looks like a GM. So in this case, what would it be? This would look like, let's do G in instead of, and let's say this is left, is equal to mu n C ox W by L, and this would be VOP minus VTH. Do you agree? I can do another transistor here and it's also in non-saturation region and apply VON here, okay. And then we can see what the G in, right, what will that be? Hmm? Mu N, C ox, W by L, then VON minus VTH. Do you agree? Now if I connect them in parallel, what happens? If I connect them in parallel, you add the two, correct? So G effective becomes mu n C ox W by L and there the magic is. What will happen? Huh? This will become VOP plus VON hmm, minus 2 VTH. Okay, and what is this value? 2 times VCM. Okay, so the G which is reciprocal of the resistance is now proportional to the output common mode voltage. Or in other words, R effective is proportional to 1 over VCM directly. So I can use this particular method to control the currents either in the top or bottom. Okay. And I am going to, uh, I will give you a circuit, but the concept is this. Uh, I would like you to understand the concept and then apply it to the circuit that I am going to give you. And maybe I will ask you in the exam how to, how the circuit works. Because that is what you are supposed to learn in this class, you know, how do you analyze complex circuits. Alright, sounds good. Thank you.